first search and everything you need to know about it for the interview. Before we actually start this video, I would like to tell all y'all out there who know about BFS, how it works, when to use it, why we need it. Uh, go ahead and try this video because these two are legal questions and they're very frequently asked DFS questions and are seen very frequently in fan companies. This is a good way to actually reinforce the knowledge you learn about DFS. So I would like to go ahead and tell you guys how I've structured this video. I have three parts to this video. Part number one, what is DFS? Part number two, why DFS? This is a real interesting part because it's good for everyone to know why we actually, why do we use this algorithm? Where did it come from? Who made it? What are the mystical origins? Why is it so important? So we should know about that too. And part number three is the part where I actually show you guys the code and let, we'll go over a dry run to see how the algorithm actually works. And I'll show you guys both the methods of actually making the DFS uh, code. Uh, we can do it by using the stack that we already have uh, by, doing, by using recursion or we can go ahead and make our own stack and do it as well. I'll show you guys both. So let's go about addressing the first part of this video and that is, what is DFS? DFS stands for Depth First Search. Depth First Search is used for two main things, which is traversing and the second thing is it could be used to find out an existing path from one point in your graph to another given those two points you could do it for graphs or for trees if you're given a graph you could use that for a search to traverse this entire graph by going from node to node to node depth first or you could use that for a search to find out an existing path between two points so assuming that this is the start point, you could find out the path from the start point to the end point, which is G. You could use DFS to solve those two things. Okay, so let's do part number two. So you guys are probably wondering why I drew that image. Let me tell you, this is a geographical sketch of France. I never said it's a good geographical sketch, but this is the best sketch I could do. So I'm sorry if I butchered it. But why is this important? It's important because somewhere in the time frame of the 19th century, somewhere in that country, there was a guy named Charles Pierre. I can't pronounce his last name and I don't want to butcher it. So this is his name and this is his face. And the dude was very interested in mazes. By mazes, I mean, you know, those mazes in movies, like the rat is running in the maze to find the cheese, or the maze in the movie, uh, hung not Hunger Games, the movie is, um, uh, I don't remember, because I'm not a movie buff, but Maze Runner, that was the movie's name. So those kind of mazes, he was very interested in those mazes. And he was very interested in particular with the question of, does there exist a path from the beginning of the maze till the end of the maze, which should be the exit, does there exist a path between that? How is there a logical way to find it? So he saw the entire maze from a mathematical standpoint and actually converted a maze into a graph. To answer this question, he came up with the initial steps for the depth first search algorithm itself. So now you guys know the mystical origins of the depth first search. What is the real world application to it though? The maze, of course. But imagine you were lost in a corn maze. That, that situation is actually really freaking scary. Imagine you were lost in a freaking corn maze. There's no way you could actually get out of that, that thing because it's too tall for you to see outside or it looks all the same and you have no food. You're stuck there for a couple of days. You're gonna thank your lucky stars. You actually saw this video because I'm gonna teach you the DFS algorithm and the DFS, you can use the DFS algorithm to actually walk your way and find your way out of the maze. And then you're gonna come back and you're gonna like my video and share it and subscribe to it. I'm just kidding. I hope you guys never get stuck in a corn maze. It's actually a really scary concept. If you guys are ever stuck in a corn maze, that's a real world application of DFS because you can use DFS to get out. I never used to think it was very interesting to know about the past or where the algorithm came from, but it gives context to the actual situation. So now you know in an interview, if you ever see a maze question, you should probably think about using a DFS first. It could actually be the answer. Okay, so let's get on to the third and final part of this video, which is code plus concept. I'm gonna show you a dry run of the DFS algorithm 
on this graph and then we're going to go ahead and code up the recursive method for it so the question is given a start node in this graph you need to traverse this entire graph using the dfs method so we are going to start at node c i want to traverse all the other nodes in that graph and at the end i want to print out the list of nodes traversed in the order of its traversal so we're going to use dfs to do this so what i like to do with these questions is i like to picture each of these nodes as individual islands and i like to picture myself on one of those islands so given the fact that i'm on the start island which is island number c i need to go ahead and travel and visit every other island in my entire graph that's how i like to picture these questions and it makes it a lot more fun so let's go ahead and start so i am on island number c to begin with every time you're on an island you need to follow three simple steps step number one take a mental note of all of the other islands adjacent to island c an island is adjacent to island c if there is an edge between island c and the other island itself step number two so once you pick the island is to pick any adjacent island to the island you're currently standing on randomly the third and final step in this process is to check if you've already visited that island. If you have not visited that island, you can go ahead and walk to that island to visit it. So let's go ahead and follow these three steps with the graph we currently have. I start at island number C. Step, I follow step number one. I take a mental note of all the adjacent islands beside island C. And I have island A, B, and D adjacent to island C. Step number two, I'm going to randomly pick an island and I pick island D. So step number three is I look at island D and I think and I question if it, if it has been visited or not. I see that it has not been visited yet. So I can go ahead and walk from island C to island D. And that becomes the current island I'm on. Since I'm on that island currently, I have technically visited that island. So I mark that island as visited. From island D, since you're, a, since you're on an island again, you start, you start by following the three steps again. Take a mental note of all of the islands adjacent to island D. In this case, we only have island C adjacent to it. Step number two is pick an island randomly. Since there's only one island adjacent to island D, you just have to pick C. Step number three is to check if you've visited C or not. In our case, we have visited C because we came from C. So now we scope all our adjacent islands again and try to find an island this time that has not been visited. I look for islands, but I don't find any. The only island adjacent to island D is island C. So there's no island to visit. There's no new island to visit from island D. So what is the next logical step is to backtrack to where you came from. And in our case, we came to island D from island C. So we backtrack ourselves there because there might be new paths to go to new islands from island C. From here, you're back to an, you're back to an island again. You follow the three steps. A, B, and D are all islands adjacent to C. So this time I pick island B randomly to travel to. And so I follow step number three and I check whether island B has been visited or not. And I see that it has not been visited. Now I should go and I visit island B. So I walk from island C to island B and I mark island B as visited. Now, since you're on an island again, you start over and follow the three steps. You take a mental note of which island is adjacent to island B. In our case, island A and island C are adjacent to island B. So we pick an island out of island A and C randomly. I pick island A. Step number three is I have to check whether island A is visited or not. And I see that it's not been visited. So I walk from island B to island A. Now, since I'm at island A and it's an unvisited island, I mark that as a visitor. I follow the steps again, and I take a mental note of all the adjacent islands to island A, and I see that island B and C are adjacent to island A. I pick B, and I see that it's already been visited. I pick, I go back, and I think, okay, let me pick C, but I see that C has also already been visited. So now what are you going to do? 
you have to go back to where you came from. And I came to Island A from Island B. So I walked back to Island B. From Island B, I look at all my adjacent islands again and I try to pick an island that I have not visited. I see that there is no island adjacent to Island B that I have not visited. So I backtrack again and I walk back to where I came from. I came to Island B from Island C. At this point, I'm back to my start position and I have visited every single island in my entire graph. So that's it. We're done with the dry run of DFS. That was very simple, right? Now we're going to go over recursive uh, code, but I will do the method where we make our own stack and go over it, but I'll do it in a later video because I don't like making the videos really long because then it's more difficult for people to follow. Let's get into the recursive code for now. I'm going to use the same example that I use on the whiteboard, so it'll be easy for us to follow as well. So step number one is we need to have a graph to traverse to because right now we have nothing. We're just starting with a black blank canvas. So I'm going to quickly make the graph. All the graph is how I'm going to make it is I'm going to use a dictionary to do that. In the dictionary, the keys will be the nodes itself in the graph and the values for each node is going to be a list of all the adjacent adjacent nodes to that particular node. So let's just do that. Okay, so now we have our entire graph. We also need a way to actually keep track of all the visited nodes. So let's go ahead and make a visited hash map so that we can keep track of all the nodes that we visited. You can do this using an array or, or a list as well. We also need to have a list to keep track of the answers and the order in which it was traversed in so that whenever we do visit a node, we can append it to that answers list so that we have track of that. Now we have our graph, we have our visited dictionary, and we have uh, a list to keep track of our traversals. So let's go ahead and actually do the bulk of the code and make the DFS function. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to actually send this graph to the DFS function so that it can be traversed. Uh, the DFS function takes in the graph itself. It takes in a start node, which we will start at node number two in the graph. And then it'll also take in the visited list as well so that it can keep track of all the nodes that have been visited. Now, currently we don't have a function for a, the DFS function. So let's go ahead and make define that as well. So here we're actually making our base cases for the recursive call. Um, the first thing we need to do is the minute the node has been passed into the DFS function, we need to mark that node as visited immediately. So let's do that. So this node has been marked as visited. We can add it to our answers list. Now we need to look, we need to actually look at which nodes we need to dive deeper into. Uh, to pass into our DFS function again. So to do this, all we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the particular node, the current nodes adjacency list, and then pick and then pass the node back into our DFS function if it's not visited. That's it. Once the recursive stack has been filled with all the recursive calls, it's going to backtrack all the recursive calls and then it's going to actually return your final answers list, which holds all the nodes you've traversed in the correct order. So let's go ahead and print that so that we can see the order in which all our nodes have been printed. And there you have it guys. So that's your, that's our answer. And that's what we were looking for as well. So I hope this video was very helpful. I try to give you the entire view of DFS, not just the code alone. But thank you. Have a nice day. Keep it positive and keep grinding. Peace.